Hi. Hello. I think that we can start. Maybe no. Anyone from the organization? Can we start? Probably yes. Okay, no problem. Living on the edge. Okay, first of all, thanks to everybody for joining us today, just for hearing us talking about Keda. So let's introduce ourselves. I'm Jorge Turrado. I work in SCRM Leader Plus, uh, part of Sparse Group as, as principal SRE. And I'm one of the maintainers of Keda. I'm CNCF ambassador, and I'm also Microsoft MVP. And he is my assistant. No, I'm joking. Go ahead, yeah, introduce maybe yourself. Hello, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all and with my dear friend and boss, Jorge. Uh, my name is Binya Grobalik. I know the name is hard to pronounce, so don't feel about it. Don't feel bad about this kind of stuff. Hey, I'm also, you. I'm also Keda maintainer. I'm with the project since the beginning. So basically, we started a couple years ago. It was a POC. It was a POC to try to solve auto scaling problem. It's, uh, it was a good solution, so we donated the project to CNCF as a sandbox project. And after a couple of years, uh, Keda is a graduated project, so this is really great. Uh, and I'm also founder and CTO at Kedify. It's a company built around Keda. Uh, we try to provide enterprise auto scaling platform for our customers, so to, to solve the special needs for, for enterprises. Anyway, let's talk about Keda. So we have a lot of stuff to cover today, so I will try to be quick. Uh, first, we will do some introduction uh, to Keda. So maybe there are some people that know Keda. Maybe there are people that don't know what Keda is. So we will try to do very quick intro. Then we will talk about some cool features and about the future. So let me start. Uh, actually, I will try to do uh, Keda in five minutes, which is kind of challenging. But anyway, let's start. So what is Keda? Uh, what is the problem that we are trying to solve? Imagine that you have an application. And the application is doing some, some important tasks, some important job. And this application, for example, is consuming data from some external source. In this case, it could be RabbitMQ. And because the, you know, the data, uh, they are not stable, you know, it's not a constant uh, flow of data. So sometimes we need to you know, uh, process more data, sometimes less data, maybe sometimes there are no data at all. So what we can do? We can plug auto scaling in the solution so we have the dynamicity in the application, right? So the first naive approach would be uh, to plug HPA, the building Kubernetes autoscaler. Uh, it is a great tool, but it has some limitations, and especially in this, in this specific use case. Because what HPA does, it monitors the CPU and memory consumption on the target workload. And in certain scenarios, especially in event-driven applications, sometimes the, the resource consumption on the target application doesn't uh, correlate with the actual need, because we need to scale the application based on the data that are happening outside of the system. So for example, in this case, uh, based, on the, uh, based on the RabbitMQ, Q length. So uh, HPA is not good fit for this. Luckily, we have Keda, and Keda is doing exactly this kind of stuff. So it is, it is scraping metrics from the external sources or cons uh, consuming like the uh, custom, metrics, custom metrics from those sources. And based on those metrics, it does the decision to scale up the application. So it is very easy, easy to use, and it also solved the problem with scaling to zero, because HPA cannot scale to zero, but with Keda, we can also scale to zero our application. Uh, the important uh, uh, point is that Keda does not manipulate the data in the RabbitMQ, so it is secure. We just monitor the metrics about the stuff. So as I mentioned, Keda is event-driven autoscaler. We are trying to make it as simple as possible. Uh, we have 60 ply plus different uh, connectors to services, AWS, Prometheus, Kafka, whatever. And you can scale your workloads or you can schedule wrong-running jobs based on those metrics. Uh, we have a big community, a lot of users, uh, a lot of staff. There is a QR code for Keda user service, so if you are a Keda user, please use this one. We will share it also at the end of the presentation. Uh, just a quick check on the, on the architecture of Keda. So we are trying to build Keda on top of Kubernetes, reuse as much possible, so we don't reinvent the wheel. So basically, Keda uh, operates on the operator pattern, I would say. So there is an operator that manages some resources. It's a scale job and scaled object resource where we define the scaling metadata. Then it provides those metrics uh, that it scrapes from those external services to HPA, that does the scaling from one to n replicas, and Keda itself manages scaling from zero to one. So it is uh, simple stuff, no rocket science. There are other components, but we don't need to uh, cover them. 
Uh, so when I was talking about the resources, there are two main resources. The first main resource is scaled object. Uh, with this scaled object, you can, uh, you can auto scale your deployment, stateful set, or any custom resource that expose uh, scale sub resource. So you can scale out this, uh, this, this workload based on, uh, based on different scalers. Uh, the scaled object has three main sections. I would say the first section is scale target, where you reference the application that you would like to scale. The second part, the middle section, is where you specify several configuration options, such as minimum, maximum, etc. And the last section is trigger section, where you can specify those connectors to external services. So there could be multiple triggers pointing to different RabbitMQ queues or Prometheus, Prometheus or whatever. The second uh, resource is called scale job. And it's very similar to scaled object. Instead of the reference to the workload, we can put directly Kubernetes jobs, uh, Kubernetes job uh, specification there. And also we have like the configuration section and the trigger section. Why this is useful? Uh, this is useful especially for long running uh, executions and processes. Because imagine you have some application that is doing some long running task, maybe some, I don't know, some LM models these days or something like that, that the, where the computation might take hours or even days. So if you use HPA or scaled object to actually scale out the application with this computation, the HPA might decide after some time to, to, you know, to scale in again and, and remove the replica because it thinks that it's, it is about to shut down the application. With scale jobs, you can basically schedule these uh, Kubernetes jobs based on those external events and the uh, job will do the stuff and uh, finish when it needs to finish. So this is the resource. And uh, yeah, so that was good in five minutes. Was it five minutes? Yeah, more or less. Okay. Maybe Perfect. you can take a breath, drink a, a couple of water. I can introduce the use case for the next feature if you agree. And then the stage will be yours again. Okay, please pass the, the slide. Have you seen? He is my assistant. <laughs> okay, scaling modifiers. Obviously, he is the expert. That's why he is the CTO, not me. It's true, the, the truth on the table. But I'm not gonna explain the, how it works, is his job. I wanna explain the use case of this because during the years, one thing that we have faced with is, uh, has been users saying, okay, Keda is nice, but how can I do some aggregated stuff? Because under the hood, the HPA controller applies a max between all the metrics, which is enough for 100% of the population, but it's not 99. enough for a real scenario. So that's why we have introduced this awesome feature. So the stage is yours. Thank you, Jorge. You can take a seat. Uh, no, I just want to. So basically, as Jorge mentioned, uh, HPA is doing the decision based on the maximum. So imagine that you have multiple triggers specified in the scaled objects. So for example, multiple RabbitMQ triggers. So what HPA is doing under the hood, it basically collects the metrics for each of the, of the source calculates the desired replica count and selects the maximum value. So this is useful maybe for a lot of people, but for those don't, uh, that want to more logic, we introduce this uh, cool feature. And it is not just you can select average or sum or whatever. You can uh, specify mathematical formula there, so you can do a lot of, lot of cool stuff, a lot of ma magic with the, with the metrics. Um, what is the use case? There are a lot of use cases. This is actual use case from, from a user when we introduced the feature and he was asking uh, independently this question. So we have the requirement to be always over provisioned by three ports. Our pod can uh, process three messages at a time. So I was like, okay, this is great, great stuff for scaling modifiers because what you can do, you can basically say the, the trigger value, which is uh, under the trigger variable, plus nine. Why nine? Because three ports uh, and three messages. Easy stuff. So now Keda reports all, all, always this amount of replicas ex, uh, extra for the for the stuff uh, of, of the scaling modifier. So, Jorge, yeah, for ahead. sure, for sure, the hard work. Yeah. Now is the I'm demo. The, I'm for the talking. You are for the work. Yeah. That's it, please. Yeah, because the meme is important. Yeah. <laughs> you could you can say why Lannister? Because we don't lie. We always pay. We always pay. Excuse me. How much do you pay me as an assistant? <laughs> Should I send an invoice or whatever? Yeah. Okay. So we don't see anything. No. This will be more complicated than I. I will guide you from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take your seat. It's a good place. Trust me. Thank you. Give a try. Okay. Maybe in that specific. Jorge, please. 
my annual review will be terrible, I guess. Okay, if you see there, we have two cron. Cron, is, cron triggers, they are just a dummy trigger for generating one metric request, one metric, or one as the metric resource. So if we deploy that scaler, that scale object, which basically, as I said, is a simple <coughs> scale object, and we go through the cluster, Although both, scale, uh, both uh, scalers in the scale object requires one metric, the sadly true is that max is applied. So we have one. Although one plus one could be two. Yeah, I'm not mathematical, so I'm a mathematician, so maybe I'm wrong. You are right. Appreciate it. <laughs> now, let's go on a comment. This is more complicated. You, you should try to mirror the screen. It will be probably faster. Don't try to invent. It could fail more dramatically. If you check, we have just given a name in the line 53 for one trigger, scalar underscore A. The other one has a scalar underscore B. Trust me. Trust me. And then on top, we have a new section called scaling, modifi scaling modifiers, modifiers with the formula section. When, where we can just use the uh, scalar as a metric sources within a formula. So in that case, we are saying, take the value from the trigger A, take the value from the trigger B, sum them, and then multiply for two. So if we have one plus one for two, we should see four instances when I apply this scale object. So go ahead, finger crossed. And now, oh, I have noticed that I didn't show lens before, right? Yes. <laughs> nice. My annual review will be terrible. Oh my God. Now you can see that it has passed from one to four. Why? Because although I had two triggers requesting one instance per trigger, HPA controller just execute a max one max one is one. Now I'm taking one plus one for two, my formula. So this brings a lot of power to us because we can use the, all the scalars that Keda provides as metric sources for our own custom formula, which is nice because <coughs> no, you, you cannot need a super advanced scenario for this. If you are using SQS, pops up from Google, uh, service bus, some system of, of queues like that, and you have three, three, uh, three queues, maybe you can, you can scale based on the, uh, the average or the sum of all of them instead of the max of all of them. Now you can do it without the requirement of creating your own code. Have you rest? Yes, I'm ready. Now, let me. Nice. One more. I will, I will do it. Yeah, so we, we saw the demo. It was nice. Thank you, Jorge. And now about other updates and features. So last couple of months, we spent improving the, the monitoring stack that we have. So right now, we expose a couple of Prometheus metrics about the, the stuff that's happening under the hood. Because you know, auto-scaling is one part, but uh, having the knowledge about the system is also important, so you can react to errors, you can modify your settings based on the values, etc. So, so we expose a bunch of different metrics from Prometheus about about errors, about how uh, about the actual value from the metrics, etc. Also, we expose the very similar metrics through Open Telemetry, so you can use your Open Telemetry collector to uh, to digest the same same stuff from Open Telemetry. And the last last thing, well, the new addition is Cloud Events. Cloud Events are cool. Uh, they are more, more let's say, event-driven. So basically, uh, we are adding these capabilities to emit events on specific occasions that are happening in the in Keda. So, for example, scaling has started. We will emit that event. So then you can plug this into your system, and maybe do some do some additional stuff around around this area. We started with just a couple of couple of things, and we are improving this area a lot. So the Prometheus and Open Telemetry is already stable, but the cloud events are the uh, the new stuff that's coming. Jorge, please. More work. Yeah, more work for you, less for me. I have to earn my salary, it's true. Okay, 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 so 
we can see the scale object that I have had you deployed. Let me share my screen because otherwise it will be mo too much complicated. Okay. Excuse me, I have to apologize. Uh, system displays and arrange. No. Where is it? Experience, maybe? Computer is right. Yeah. Horrible. Or main display, extended display. Mirror, mirror. Mirror. The, the third option. The or first the, option. No, no, nice. the, no, 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 the third option. You, you don't yeah. see the same. Mirror. Yes. Nice. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great job. Thanks. I appreciated your help. Please yeah. clap. Thanks, I appreciate it. It takes the knowledge to be CTO, right? So Yeah, 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 you have the experience, it's true. I trust in you. Okay, once again, I have my scale object, blah, 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 two instances, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and now we have the metrics. As Zbigniew told, we have our own metrics exposed by Prometheus or by <coughs> Just open telemetry. For this quick demo, I just have deployed a single, let me show you. Uh, where is it? Where is it? In manager. Here we go. Here we go. Do you need help again? I think that I can do it. I'm not totally sure, but I will do my best. Trust I'm me. Best too. Can you see the screen? Maybe it's too small. Okay. Don't worry, it's a scene because we are here for talking about Keda, not Prometheus operator. So don't worry. <laughs> it's just a service monitor from Prometheus where you can see that when I go through the metrics of the Prometheus metrics in Keda, I am appending the extra tag source slash Prometheus. And I do the same when I go through open telemetry, but adding the collector just for having different lab labels checking Prometheus because I'm gonna use Prometheus, of course. If we check them here, for instance, oh, it's terrible, it's terrible. Command plus, 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 nice. Yep, source, 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 source. Where is it? Here. We can see that we are just sending the metrics through Prometheus, so us through, through collector. So why, or oh, what are we earning with this? We don't need Prometheus. There are plenty of use cases where you can say, I don't need Prometheus anymore. I'm scrapping all the metrics or I'm sending them directly from open telemetry. And we are, we really try to make the auto scaling that simple, not having to take into account, okay, for the scale, for deploying Keda, I require Prometheus. Now it's something that probably you are using, but we want to not enforce it. And apart from that, I have my plan B. And of course, if we go through the collector and we check the logs, command plus, 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 I learned quite fast. Good. Yeah. You can say that, can I send in the metrics? So the metrics are there. It's nice because we have all the information and we can just resend re re it wherever we want. Rafana, uh, another Prometheus. To, to uh, Azure, CloudWatch, GCP, wherever you want. So I think that is a good improvement. And the last but not least, the cloud events. Obviously, I have created a huge and terrible mock for it. Uh, don't, don't punish me, I'm not developer. So I hope that you can apologize me or, or say, accept my apology, sorry. But in this case, we have the event. Scale object is ready for scaling. So thanks to this, we can just send wherever we want, currently only by HTTP, but we are working on other relays. We can send all the events that they are happening in your cluster to a centralized way. Why this is useful? Because maybe you have 20, get an installation. Yesterday, if I remember, an awesome girl talked about their awesome use case. Thanks, appreciate it. And they have more than one cluster. So instead of having to collect the metrics and, and, and so on, they can just show 
the use case they are not using. I'm not selling a feature that they didn't present. But it's just an idea. You can manage multiple clusters from a single place just through <laughs> cloud events. I'm okay? Yes, okay, perfect. Nice. So let me check again. Okay, um, more features, authentication. This has been the year of the security for us, I could say. No, it's true, no, it's not true, but it's something that we have been working hard because maybe if you joined us last, you joined us last year, <laughs> but a thing that is quite important for us is that Keda must be secure as default, must be saved. Why? Because Keda for working, needs more than the usual privileges. Because for instance, if you want to check the amount of messages on a RabbitMQ, you need to list them. And it's a, it's a permission that usually applications don't have. It's more management permissions so for us. The security is the most important thing that we have taken into account. Due to this, we have migrated to AWS V2 SDK we migrated uh, six months ago, if I'm not wrong. We also, we ha also have supported a new pod authentication. Do you know what means pod authentication? It's quite different depending on the provider. In AWS, it's IRSA role assumption. In GCP and Azure means World Identity Federation. Pod identity. We need to standardize the name, sorry. We are lazy for remember more of than one. But we have also added support for Bolt. Keda now can go through AWS Secret Manager or GCP Secret Manager and pull the secrets directly. This in combination <coughs> with the previous step, with the pod identities, is the most secure approach that we can provide if the, if the, if the service doesn't support that uh, role assumption or that identity. Why? Because you can go to take this, the secret from the secret ball that you have and <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and use it. And the secret is in memory. You don't need to pass the secret to Kubernetes API, which usually is not is not more, more, and even more. You are tired. Speed right? up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, you want faster? Be clear, please. Terrible orders. Okay, go faster. Uh, Azure. Azure, perfectly. We have integrated this approach, this managed identity support on several scalers, <coughs> such as Prometheus that now support pod identity in different clouds. And also we are migrating to the new Azure SDK. Awesome, thank you. This is a great, great start. Uh, now so let's talk about performance. Just real quick. I think that they have discovered who is the technician, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Okay, about performance. Last year, Grafana Labs, kudos to Grafana Labs, offered to CNCF projects a free, a free account for executing performance and monitoring and so on. And we integrated Grafana K6, that which is a nice tool. I suggest to give a try. Where is it? Open. Open. Skip verification, I trust on my own link. Oh my God. I think we can go ahead and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. <laughs> Jorge, you are fired. I know it. And the worst part is that I had it already prepared. I am terrible. Okay, basically, I would suggest take a look to this repository. This repository is public, is in Keda.org, is built on open source technologies, and there you have the, end, the performance test, the load test that we are currently running. We are testing Keda with 1,000 scale objects and one metric. Right now, we are working on improving the performance checks, but we want to present or introduce this repository just for giving the choice and giving the information for running in your own infrastructure. Check Keda at a scale in your own infrastructure. And let's continue. Yeah, yeah. I speak too much. It's true. Maybe I have to ask for a salesman role. Your turn. Awesome. Uh, so n n let's talk about the future. We don't have much time, but let's let's do it. So. What is next for Keda? We have covered the auto-scaling stuff, we schedule Kubernetes jobs, 
we can do all the, all the good stuff. So the next cool feature could be actually predictive scaling. We are talking about this for ages, but I think we should do it. So basically, what is the, what is the, what is the idea behind this? We have all these metrics coming to KEDA, so we know the, the, the state of the system, let's say, and we can, we can learn some model that, that basically about, like the, about the stuff that's happened on, in the past and maybe predict the scaling a little bit. So let's say that we know that every, every second Friday there is a huge, a huge spike coming to our application, so maybe we can pre-scale a little bit, little bit uh, faster, so we can handle the load even, even faster than with the traditional scaling. The other, other, other inter interesting stuff could be uh, storage scaling, because you know, we, we would like to also st scale the storage. And we are actually uh, um, discussing with the uh, data and Kubernetes community to, to, uh, you know, yeah, to, to implement this kind of stuff. And also cloud events. We talk about cloud events, so we would like to extend on these capabilities because so far the, uh, the current implementation is, is just limited, but we would like to expose events about basically anything that's happening in, in Keda. And now let's talk about the last thing on the roadmap, uh, which is the HTTP yeah. add-on. Yeah, because maybe this project is not new. It's something that we, are, have, we have been trying to push during the last year. Keda works really nice. I don't say it. Users and customers say it. Customers don't, they don't pay me. But users uh, think that in general, or the, the experience that I have, that I have had. But what, for, what can we use for HTTP traffic? Because HTTP is quite different. It's not an event, or it can be, but it's synchronous event. You must be there. If you are not there because you have a scale to zero and you can't hold the request, you are, you are gone. The, the request will be lost. In this case, the HTTP add-on allows us to hold the request thanks to the interceptor in the middle. As we are a bit out of time, I will be quite fast. I am around, so you can ping me, you can grab me, you can grab me from my hair, no problem. The architecture is almost like this. The, the red uh, boxes is the add-on, the HTTP add-on. You can just route the traffic through the, the, directly from the load balancer through the interceptor, and the interceptor will manage the traffic, will handle the traffic, will hold the request if there is an, any available instance behind, and, and will trigger the scaling out for preparing the instance and then the regular flow of any networking traffic. And sure Imo, yeah, go ahead. Imo. I know that should be any paparazzi or something so, because they told me, they sent me an stolen picture, but it was funny, so I use it for my demo. And if we check the namespace, uh, where is it? HTTP demos, I can see that there is any pod, Deployment is scaled to zero. Yeah, now I'm sharing the correct screen. Good for me. Yes. Yeah. And let me go to the demo. It's loading. Call the start. Okay. They took a, a picture of us. It's from yesterday, actually. We are. We were yesterday. <laughs> yeah, check. It's been is taller than me. And what happened in... Show I us the pot. Click it again. It has been instantly. Why? Because the post were, were, uh, has been already there. The post, the, uh, the pod is there. Why? Because the first request has triggered the scaling out, and then the pod is available. So we can hold the request for a specific time. There is a timeout that you can configure, but we are supporting, in this case, the scaling to zero also for HTTP. This add-on is on beta. We have uh, an issue. Uh, for trying to draw the roadmap, the roadmap until going to GA. So I invite you to go there and put your use case, give us feedback. Give us feedback. Open PRs. Yeah, please, open PRs. The, the left guy will be angry if you don't do it. Yes. <laughs> and he's quite strong. You are quite strong. Just on strong. the picture, just on the picture. <laughs> and I think that we are almost done. Pa, 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 pa. The last one, the last You know there's a way to open the current slide, right? <laughs> I have to say that, and this is 100% true, I had no idea. I have not idea about that possible. I will learn you and you know, teach you that and you will learn. Thanks, uh, appreciate it. I will send you invoice then. Appreciate it. <laughs> and thanks for joining us. Do you have any question? So, Please rate the session, and this is also the survey for Keda users. So, if you are Keda user, please fill the survey. It's useful for us. Thank you.
Any questions? Yeah, we have some questions. So what is the difference between KEDA and uh, custom metrics, and is there an advantage of using that? So KEDA is built on custom metrics, but you know, custom metrics, you mean the, the adapter, right? Custom metrics adapter. We are using custom metrics under the hood. No worries, I can answer. Yeah. Uh, the main difference is that custom metrics is another API. If you are using Prometheus adapter, it's a really good option, but Prometheus adapter don't, doesn't support scaling to zero, as far as I remember, and you must scrape all the metrics into your Prometheus. So if you want to use AWS metrics, you can do it. Prepare your wallet, because as far as I know, you will pay too much in CloudWatch, but it's something that you can do. The good part of Keda is, or in my opinion, the, the strong uh, aspect of Keda is the scaling to zero, but also the, the scalar catalog built in without any change. And another important uh, thing for Keda, in my opinion, is that it's more developer focused, de uh, focused on developers because we try to make the thing simple for them. In Prometheus Adapter, you need to reconfigure as an admin all the relabels for making the metrics available. With Keda, you can deploy and scale object, and it's built, everything is built in. You just don't need to deploy the scale object, and you don't need to reconfigure anything at any level, neither in Prometheus. Okay, other question? Hi, um, I'd like to know if you use this HTTP uh, scanning to zero, do you preload your Docker images to the nodes so you don't have to pull them first if the request arrives? That's a interesting stuff. No, we haven't implemented this, but this is a interesting okay. stuff. Demon set to solve this, right? Uh, a question regarding your HTTP add-on. Uh, are you also scaling your interceptor? Not at the moment, I suppose. Uh, you have interceptor, which is accepting the traffic as a forward to deployment. The interceptor, yeah. sorry, sorry, Tom. Tom. The interceptor is also scaled based on their own metrics through Keda, out of the box. Yeah, you can configure the target uh, request for scaling, but it's something already scaled because otherwise the interceptor could be a problem. Ah, uh, so for interceptor, does all the requests start coming through interceptor then? Is it like after ingress, all the requests goes to interceptor, then goes to all the services? Yes. Okay. We are working on isolated interceptors, but right now, or I mean interceptors on demand, but right now there is, you have to, to use the same interceptor. But you, in the opposite of Keda, that is cluster scope, due to some limitation in the metric server API, uh, you can deploy the HTTP add-on namespace it. So it's not the best way, but you can have a tenancy isolation right now. Uh, thanks. Uh, in, your first, in your first example, when you were scaling up to four replicas, there was uh, two time ranges, like 24 hours. And uh, for me, personally, Cron is a, a program that produces event each minute. And instead of that, your time range was like 24 hours every second it was this was just for demo purposes so basically uh, when we designed the cron scaler we mm -hmm. need to find a way how to basically uh, enable users to specify some specific time right so yes we have the start and end there with the cron yeah, schedule sure, sure. Uh, my question was what's the reasoning behind the name selection why it doesn't name as clock or like time or time range or something yeah probably that's probably better but <laughs> it's a good question <laughs> a really good question. There is, yeah, there is an there is an issue because we have discovered you are not the first one yeah. who told the, this to us. You are totally right. We are working on a new scaler like Time Window or something. Window, so I yeah. don't remember, and deprecate the Cron scaler. But Cron scaler has been there since the beginning, and it's quite legacy right now. Yeah, I know and a lot of lot of users are using it, so it's hard <laughs> to deprecate the stuff. So yeah, we need to carry on with the name. Yeah. Sorry for that. Thanks for the feedback. <laughs> we are working on it. So we are out of the time, I suppose. Yes. So thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Art. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.